Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move away from Charleston Harbor, North Carolina and over to Dayton Walker Counties, Georgia for the Battle of Davis Crossroads. This occurred on September 10th and 11th, 1863. The attacking Union forces were led by Union Major General James S. Nagley, a recipient of the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania school system and volunteer during the Mexican-American War. After the Mexican-American War, James had become a farmer and horticulturist until he was reactivated and appointed a Brigadier General in April of 1861. Negley was commanding an 8,000-man division. The defender today was Thomas Carmichael Heinemann Jr., also a veteran of the Mexican-American War and a lawyer with political ambitions in Arkansas. Heinemann was commanding more than 12,000 men. The victor today would be the Confederates under General Thomas C. Heinemann Jr., setting up what would be the Bloody Battle of Chickamauga on September 19th. After successfully pushing the Confederates out of Chattanooga, Union General Rosecrans ordered his 14th Corps under the command of Major General George H. Thomas to push forward in Northern Georgia territory, effectively splitting Rosecrans' forces. The reason is Rosecrans' bad intelligence indicated Bragg's forces were demoralized. Hint for the day? They were not. As they pushed after the Confederates, the Union troops secured Missionary Ridge and Pigeon Mountain while also moving into Mecklemore Cove. When Confederate General Braxton Bragg learned that the Union forces had split, he halted his movement southward. On the afternoon of September 9th, he ordered an attack on the vanguard of Thomas's troops at Lookout Mountain near Stevens Gap. The morning of September 10th, the 14th Corps forward movement was led by Union Major General James Scott Negley's division via travel on the Doug Gap Road. Nagley himself was riding at the head of his troops when the Confederate defenders opened fire on the unsuspecting Union troops. In a streak of some good luck, Nagley was not injured in the initial attack and ordered his men to fall back to Davis Crossroads by the evening of September 10th. The orders were to await Union General Absalon Baird and his division to arrive. A little more luck was present for the Union as the Confederate forces' communication and coordination was lackluster and they did not take the advantage to attack Nagley as he was still outnumbered and waiting. By morning, Confederate Commander Bragg had discovered this error and ordered another attack on September 11th. But by now, Baird's division had reinforced Nagley and they had all moved back to Bailey's Crossroads with a very strong rear guard as Thomas ordered the Union troops overall to stop and withdraw. The Union rear guard awaited on Missionary Ridge between the West Chickamauga and Chattanooga Creeks and engaged in low-level skirmish fighting as the Union continued to withdraw. The battle itself was a low-level conflict, meaning casualties are believed to be low, but there was no final count for either side. This did, however, set up for one of our future battles, the Bloody Battle of Chickamauga, which would happen in a little more than a week from now. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.